Welcome to today's interview at Njozi Studio. I'm your host, Rebecca Rektimbo. Today we have with us a renowned international preacher who has preached the word of God across nations, bringing the word of God to different countries. And today he has graced us with his presence at Njozi Studio. Welcome, Pastor. Amen. 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 I know you are known by many titles, doctor, pastor. Which one do you prefer to be called? Both. You, you can call me both. Both of them work for yes, they work for the work of God. Yes. Amen. So in your work as a pastor, what makes you be called a doctor? Well, I don't know. They mm. call me a doctor mm. because uh, I went to school. Mm -hmm. I went to school. I, I have um, a doctor of ministry degree. And uh, therefore, I am a pastor but uh, also a professional pastor. That's why they called me a doctor because I went, I, 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 I went, I studied for it. I went to school for it. Amen. So viewers, he's saying that he's a doctor because also of his academic qualification that has allowed him to attain the title of a doctor. Doctor and Pastor Mohando, thank you so much for coming today and for being with us. Just to kick this off, I would like to know more, if you can tell the audience more about yourself. Um, I don't really know what to say about myself, but I am, uh, I am uh, 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 Pastor Harry Mohando, Dr. Harry Mohando from, uh, from Tanzania. I was born in Tanzania, raised in Tanzania and uh, went to school in India and America. No, I went to school in Tanzania. I went to school in India. I went to school in the U.S. Um, but uh, maybe if you wanted to know more about myself, I am a, a, a pastor, yeah. uh, but uh, I am... Uh, also traveling around the world, preaching the everlasting gospel. And uh, I don't know what more you want to know about myself, but that is all that I can say. But if you wanted to know more, just ask me some questions. That explains very well. I also wanted to ask you, Pastor, just to give us a brief understanding of when did you know that this is what you wanted to do? When did you know that you wanted to become a minister? Yes, um, it was, uh, it was um, uh, when I went to school, my greatest anticipation and uh, my greatest passion was to become a medical doctor. People expected me to, to, to become a pastor, but that was not my my passion at the beginning, uh, so I I I went to school. I went to medical school. I went to medical school. I was at Muhimbili in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, um, as a medical student. But when I was in my second year, when I was in my second year in the medical school, that was uh, the time I met one of the um, I could I could call it. I met a problem there. Mm -hmm. um, all was going very well, but when when I was in my second year, my professors wanted me to 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 attend uh, lectures on Saturday, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for me, going to school or going to the class on Saturday. Uh, was something very hard for me. Therefore, I said no. I told them frankly, it was a, it is a government medical school, public medical medical school. I told them that I'm an Adventist, a Seventh Adventist, and the Saturdays is my very very special day when I am supposed to be at the church. But not only do I go to church because they also mentioned that the class ends at about uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Therefore, I could just from the class go to church. But I told them that uh, Sabbath begins Friday night when the, the sun goes down. 
and it continues until the sun goes down on Saturday. So I told them that during all those hours, all those hours, I am supposed to just spend them entirely for God. So I told them that I cannot attend even one hour, even half an hour I can't. I said, I am keeping the Sabbath. And for some time they agreed with me. They, they were quiet. They did not bother me. Because every time I came back from church, when the Sabbath was over, I would go and meet my fellow students. And, and um, meeting my fellow students, I took notes of what they have um, been studying during the course of the day. And I went to the library. And every Monday when the teacher brought a test, I was number one. That I thought it would impress, impress my, my professor, but it didn't. It caused him even to be more proud. He said, um, I don't care whether you get an A or whatever you get, but if we continue in this manner, he said to me, at the end of your studies, I will disqualify you for a degree. So he said, either you abide with our rule and you go to, you come to class or you will be dismissed from the medical hostel. So um, it was hard for me because I did not know what I was supposed to do at the end in case, in case I was to be dismissed, what I would do because my, my all my energy, all my mind, all my everything <clears throat> was centered on becoming a medical doctor. So finally, they dismissed me. They dismissed me from the medical school. And uh, I, I, I did not know what I was going to do. Some people came to me and said, now it is your turn to become a pastor. I said, uh, no, no. Um, I said, if I become a pastor because I have been dismissed, if I became a pastor because I have been dismissed, that means God is taking second-hand people, people who have been dismissed, people who have no um, um, employment anywhere, people who have nothing to do. They are the ones to become a pastor. I refused. So when I refused, I looked for a job, looked for a job, and the Lord just opened a big door for me, and I worked with the national printing company in Dar es Salaam, they took me as their printing estimator. This is a government, powerful government printing institution. So they took me there, and I was with them for almost three and a half years. Almost three and a half years. And they gave me promotion after promotion, increasing my salary almost twice every year. Amen. Because of, of the good work that um, they thought I was doing. And it was at that time. When I was at the peak of my, um, my um, profession, when the Holy Spirit was talking to me to want me to become uh, a permanent preacher of the good news. Amen. So I resigned. At the end of three and a half years, I resigned. I gave a one-month notice. One-month notice. They did not want it. My, my general manager was was very sorry that I was to leave. He thought that I was going to get a, a better job that was more paying. And he said, if you want us to pay more, we are willing to pay you more in the case there is something that we are missing here. I said to them, no. In fact, where I am going, I am going to become a pastor and the salary I'm going to get there is less than half of what you are offering me. But the Lord God is calling me to do something that will be a blessing to millions of people around the world. Therefore, I am leaving. And he said, in case those people mistreat you there, your room is right here and we are willing to take you back. I just thanked him, but deep down in my heart I was saying, no one is coming back here. No one is coming back here because I am not going because it is people who are looking for me. It is God who is calling me. So that was the beginning of my entering into the ministry. 
and uh, if you wanted to know this. That's powerful, viewers. You can hear the pastor. How many of us are willing to take that step, just like Daniel? Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose true, as what the pastor has talked about today. Taking that step to the extent of leaving a career that is very promising because you want to serve God. That was very powerful, Pastor. We thank you for sharing that. But I would also think it would be great for the viewers to also understand what really motivates you to do this work. Uh, what is motivating me to do this work is uh, the salvation of people. I am doing what I am doing because it is a very rewarding experience. In fact, my greatest passion is to depopulate hell. Amen. To depopulate hell, to enlarge the number of those who are going to heaven, and to reduce the number of those who are going to hell. Those who are hell-bound hell bound are never to, 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 to continue with that one again. Because the devil's purpose is to enlarge hell with millions and billions of people. But now my purpose is to frustrate the devil through the preaching of the everlasting gospel. So mine is to see thousands and thousands everywhere I go surrendering their lives to Jesus and leaving the realm of the devil in order to enlarge the kingdom of heaven. So I am in the business of representing Jesus right here on earth so that we can work together, me and him, to reduce the number of those who are going to hell through the preaching of the everlasting gospel. Amen. You have heard yourself. He said his biggest mission is to depopulate hell and to enlarge the kingdom of God. What is the greater mission that we can live to? According to Matthew 28, go ye and make disciples. And that is the job that the pastor is doing. Going out there and making disciples for God. The mission and the call that we have all been given as servants of God to push for the kingdom. Pastor, you have shared a lot about what motivates you. But I also believe it's a challenging work because you have a family, you have a life. So how do you balance time for your family, time for the ministry? How do you do it? I don't have um, um, a problem with that one. In fact, I don't call it a sacrifice. It is a joy. It is something that is giving us um, uh, the last, the, the, the greatest joy. My family is happy when I am away. They are busy praying. It's part of their mission to pray for me as I go around to preach the gospel. I go for a number of weeks and I come back and I stay with them for a number of weeks. I make sure that I balance. If I am away, let's say for one month, I come back and stay with them for one month. At the same time, ministering at home, ministering to my own people at home in my house. And at the same time, ministering to the nearby congregations who might need me. So I make sure that my time is highly balanced. I go for three weeks, I come back and stay for three weeks. I go for five weeks, I come back and stay with them for five weeks. And so I celebrate both where I am going to share the good news of salvation, but at the same time, I celebrate being at home. Amen. Ministry begins at home. He does not neglect any, and there's no break. Hachoki mtuapa. We begin at home, we go out into the world, we send the message, and that's a good principle to live by. Thank you for sharing. For those of you who are wondering, how do you balance serving God and serving, also being there for your family? The pastor has given us a good example, that the first church you have is your home. You preach to them, but you also preach to the world out there. Thank you so much, pastor, for that. Something else that we talked about in the beginning that you are really an international pastor. You have studied in Tanzania, you have studied in India, you have studied in the United States, and now you're preaching in many countries. 
if you can recollect in your mind, how many countries have you been to so far? I have not counted. I have not counted. But one thing is that I have uh, preached almost all over the continent of Africa, preached in Nigeria, preached in Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, DRC, uh, Burundi, Zambia, Malawi, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, Lesotho, just to mention a few. But I also preached in, uh, in, uh, in India, different parts of India, in Pune, where I went to school, I conducted campaigns in, in there. I also uh, conducted campaigns in, uh, in New Delhi. I preached also in, uh, in the Philippines. So I preached in Africa and as, as well as in Asia. I preached in, uh, in Russia, in uh, London, in um, Amsterdam. I preached in, uh, uh, in many parts of Europe. I also preached in, uh, in, uh, in, in several cities in Canada and several cities in the United States. Therefore, you can see that I have traveled quite around and uh, I have uh, almost covered the world. Amen. And that is where the Bible tells us that and this gospel will be preached throughout the world. And that is what pastor is doing, moving around the world, sending the message, salvation, hope, bringing many to God, depopulating hell. And that is quite a mission to do. In all these places you've been, are there any memories or testimonies that you can share that you think the viewers will really benefit from hearing? Well, um, one of the greatest memories is Nairobi City campaign. Nairobi, probably that too was one of the most powerful evangelistic campaign that I ever conducted at the Uhuru Park. At the Uhuru Park in Nairobi, big place. For those of you who have visited Kenya, you must have visited Uhuru Park. That campaign was so powerful that not only did we baptize more than 3,000 people, but it was highly attended. When people heard from every part of Kenya, people were traveling, especially weekends. Sabbath days were, was the greatest. At one time, it was estimated that more than 300,000 people were in, attendant in, that, in attendance in that, in that evangelist campaign. It was one of the most powerful. It was a five-week evangelist campaign. And I could say that they had hired 15 big buses, Nairobi big buses, to bring people from every corner of the city to come to Huru Park. Every day, people were coming free of charge and being taken back to their places free of charge. And it was such a powerful thing that even the president invited me to the state house to pray for him. Maybe one of those powerful campaigns that you could talk of, that was one of them. And um, that is one of the, those powerful memories that I could give. But there is so much that uh, I have been experiencing so many good things. And another campaign that I had uh, co conducted that was also one of the biggest was also in Kenya. It was also in Kenya. And that was uh, in, uh, uh, in Kisi City. That campaign was also a five-week campaign. Five-week campaign. And more than 6,000 people were baptized. That was one of those powerful campaigns that I have conducted. But every campaign that I have ever conducted was also special. I conducted one in Johannesburg, in one of the places where there were only one Seventh Adventist. In the in the in uh, um, uh, in that part of the city of uh, Johannesburg, and uh, with only one member, I traveled all the way from the U.S. to go to South Africa to conduct a campaign in a place where there is only one Adventist. It was a three-week campaign, and we managed to baptize uh, 
10, 10 people. And I have considered that to be one of the most successful campaigns with uh, more than 1,000 percent success. A place with only one member baptizing 10 people in three weeks. That was another powerful evangelistic program that I cannot forget. So maybe those two could be enough. Amen. That's quite a lot to think about reaching that number of people, baptizing people, bringing people to Christ, and bringing the ten to Christ who are now a church. Because the word of God tells us where two or three are gathered, there also I am. That is a church that has been planted by sending the ministry of God to places that sometimes as humans we fear. Other people would think one person is not a place I should go. But the pastor took up that challenge and moved on with it. Pastor, another question that I think would be quite good to understand. What message do you really want people to get every time you stand up on that pulpit? Yeah. The message that I normally want my people to get is uh, the power of reproduction. Spiritual reproduction. I don't just want to preach, preach to people. I want the people that I preach to, they also will be inspired to do likewise. In other words, I go to a place, I share with them the good news of salvation. I want them also to be magnetized. To be magnetized is to also begin to set goals of the people they would bring. I am there to preach to hundreds of people or whatever the number, but the people who are attending, I want also them to experience the power of contamination. That I am preaching a message, a, uh, the, 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 the kind of a gospel that contaminates people. That will make someone to say, if Harry Mahalo could come all the way, I will also have to do something for my community around, for the members of my family, and for the people who are living close to me. That they also invite them, they come to listen to the word of God, and the more they do it, they receive not only their own salvation, but they are also in the business of doing what I'm doing. Amen. Viewers, you've heard yourself, the pastors talked about spiritual reproduction. Are you a magnet? Are you attracting others to Christ? Are you attracting others to follow Christ? Are you moving that message the same way that the pastor is saying, the power of reproduction? What are we doing as Christians? Are we producing? That's something that we should all think about. So, pastor, I know you're a pastor, but I know you're also an international consultant. What do you consult on, and how do you manage to do both? Um, I don't know how to answer that one also, but um, what I am doing is that I meet people. I meet people as I travel around the world. I meet various kinds of people, many kinds of people, the educated, the uneducated, meet students, I meet um, people who are sick, people who, are, who have problems, people who are business-minded people, people who want to do business, people who want to grow. I meet people who, are, who want to, to go for further studies. And uh, I, I meet all, all kinds of people. So I devote my time. I meet also people who are married those who are not married. So I have tried to cultivate a ministry that every person I meet, I have something to share with them so that they will never remain the same again having met them. If they are students, I want them to reach the highest level of academic attainment. 
if they um if they are business people, I want them to be multiplied because the God I serve is a God of abundance. He's mm-hmm. a God of multiplications. I want them to begin to think bigger and bigger and bigger to multiply their tithes. Multiplication according to the kind of mindset that I try to set on them. I begin to give them some examples of people who have attained great success in the same area and that they, there is no limit. There is no limit to what God can do. I try to to change the mindset of people to think beyond what they have been thinking lately. So if they are married, I want them to experience happiness beyond imagination and to 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 attain um prosperity and success so i i i i have learned to 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 empower and to equip people for greatness amen to equip people for greatness this reminds us of a parable that jesus gave that when he gave talents to his servants some of them went and buried but the pastor here does not want you to bury that talent. He wants you to go and multiply it, to live to the full potential that God is calling you to be. And that is the purpose of life, to live fully for what Christ has called you to become. That's very powerful, pastor. Now, just a funny question that I think some of us ask ourselves sometimes. What do pastors talk about when they are alone? Pastors... When they are alone, pastors are also human beings. They talk of what they, wa- they, they love. They talk of what they love. They talk about eating the best. They talk about uh, um, about church growth. They don't want to be stagnant in the churches. They want multiplications also, especially those pastors who are thinking bigger. They talk of multiplication, not just to, to come on uh, the day of worship and find uh, many, many people seated there. They want to see multiplications of their memberships. So they want to learn from each other. They, When they, we sit together as pastors, we are always... Um, looking for someone who is doing better than yourself. And if you are free from jealousies, you want to know the secret of success. Why is he succeeding the way he's succeeding? For example, for me, I wanted to be like a, a Mark Finley, the dean of evangelists, Adventist evangelism in our generation. And always when I met him, I wanted to attend some of his seminars because I wanted to be like him and even surpass him. So when we as pastors meet, we want to learn also from one another, to learn from one another. But uh, we, 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 we talk about our families. We sometimes uh, learn that some of our fellow pastors have more and more of happy homes, apparent happy homes, and want to know, to know the secret of their success. Some of the pastors have children who are highly educated and very successful. We want also to learn from others what made them to reach where they have reached. So we talk about almost everything and anything. There's no limit. Pastors are humans too. You've heard that yourself. And sometimes as congregation, as members, we tend to not see our pastors as humans. But they are humans. That's why they understand our problems. Just as Jesus had to come down and become man to save us, they also understand our problems because they go through them. And that is something that should keep us focused and know that we can rely on pastors to pray for us, to advise us, because they understand what we are going through. So, Pastor, after Kolwezi, where are you headed next? After Kolwezi, 
I have an appointment to be with my wife. So after Kolowezi, I go home and spend time with my family. And I'll be with them for almost one month. Amen. You've heard that the family balance he was talking about in the beginning. He makes sure he has time for his family. And after here, he's headed home to be with his family. Then after that, where to next? <laughs> yes, after um, um, I have been home for about a month, I have a powerful invitation, powerful invitation to go to Kinshasa. To Kinshasa, probably the largest city in the continent of Africa. And I will be with them for four weeks. For four weeks, I will be there. And they have arranged a unique program, unique. I say it is unique because I think it is one of those unique programs that I have ever seen anywhere in all the places that I have visited around the world. They wanted me to be there and um, for, e for four weeks visiting four major sites of the entire city conducting one week evangelistic and stewardship um, program. And uh, I will be there. They want me to be there just as part of the preparation for the next year, five week evangelistic campaign that will conduct, be conducted in one of the major sites in the city where all the churches in the city will come together. So I will be just be there for four weeks as part of the preparation for their upcoming evangelistic campaign next year. Powerful. The ministry never sleeps, keeps going on and on. Pastor, have you ever experienced pain in your life? Can you explain? Any sort of pain. Have you ever felt any challenges in life or felt a point where you felt that this is too much, I'm in pain, I feel sorrow. Have you ever had that in your life? I want you to be very careful. Because when you talk pain, then you experience the pain. Mm. When you talk challenges, challenges in your life never stop. So for me, I don't even remember any pain. I don't even remember any challenge. Because whatever challenge that I ever maybe experienced, if there was any, it was to lift me to a higher level. Amen. So I never prioritize. on talking about the challenges of the past. I never um, um, specialize on remembering pains of the past. In fact, even when you look at my face, do you, do you, see, any <laughs> do you see any sign that there was ever a time when I had pain? For me, I don't even talk or think of pains and challenges. I talk only of the unlimited, unlimited doors of opportunities that the Lord has opened for me all down the years and the unlimited areas of happiness and rejoicing that the Lord has been opening for me everywhere. Mm. The wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people that I meet every place I go. Mm. For the powerful hospitality that has been extended to me everywhere I have gone around the world. I specialize mm. on the joys and the rejoicings 
and the happiness that I have been experiencing. I have never, never experienced anything that has made me unhappy. Amen. That is powerful. I've learned something very huge from that, Pastor. It reminds us of what Paul was saying, that whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, think of those. And that is a lesson we have learned today from Pastor. So, Pastor, there are people out there who are watching this interview today, and they feel like life is not worthwhile anymore. There's so much pain, there's war in Ukraine, there's hunger, people have no jobs. What message can you give to these people today? There is no permanent pain. There is no permanent suffering. Whatever people might be experiencing, they should know that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Things will change as long as life continues. Things will change and we shall forget about those issues forever and never to be remembered. So my encouragement to them is that let them, let them know that the majority of us are praying for them and then soon and very soon problems will pass. That also will pass away and never to return. Amen. It will pass away and never to return. Something that you should keep in your mind with this interview today. So, Pastor, one other question as we wind up this interview. What advice would you give to someone who is thinking about going into ministry? Um, my question to anyone who wants to join ministry is what motivates you? Is it you yourself motivated to go into the ministry or it is God? Have you tested your calling? Whether it is God who is calling you or it is people who are calling you. For me, wherever I go around the world, wherever I go around the world, I ask the Lord, are you the one who is calling me there? Even when I came to Kolowezi, now this interview is taking place in Kolowezi City. I told the Lord several times with the fasting that if you are not the one who is calling me to Kolowezi, close the door. Close the door. I don't want to go to a place where people are calling me and not you. I want people who are cooperating with you to call me and you have allowed me to go there. Therefore, if you are thinking of joining the ministry, ask yourself several questions with fasting and prayer, telling God that he will close every door if the Lord does not see him, that he will be very, very fruitful and very, very successful and very, very happy in the ministry. You must enjoy whatever you are doing with the greatest enjoyment. In other words, you can join the ministry and end up frustrated the rest of your life. Because you are not in the world. It was not, not God who was calling you. So whoever God is, whoever thinks of entering the ministry must uh, seriously consider asking the Lord if it is really God who is calling this person. Otherwise, you could have done something more powerful Something that would have been a blessing to the pastors, to the members, to the church. Something that would glorify God more than entering the ministry. Because God has so much to do. There are so many people who can, who can become a blessing, a blessing to the church for many, many years to come and glorify God even more than you yourself entering the ministry. Think of somebody who God has uh, endowed with um, with um, with a gift to to do business, someone who can give fifty million dollar tithe every year, someone who can give one hundred million dollar every month, 
as tithe to the Lord. Who will bless the ministry for him? And here you might be in the ministry and not be doing very well. So, in other words, God has so much that he wants our people to, to do than just entering into the ministry. You beca can become a source of inspiration to millions, to thousands of evangelists if you were elsewhere, even more than becoming an evangelist yourself. So, in other words, what I'm saying here is consider asking God, is this where you are going to use me to the maximum? Amen. Consider if that is the place that God is going to use you to the maximum. Ask him. It reminds us of a hymnal that says, Hark the voice of Jesus calling. Who will go and work for me? Fields are ripe. The harvest is ready. Who will go and work for me? He says, if you cannot teach like Paul, if you cannot sing like angels, don't say there is nothing you can do. God has something that you can do for the ministry. That is what the pastor is telling us today. Now, pastor, you have been in Kolwezi now. This is the fifth week, preaching the word of God, baptizing many. And in most of the places you've visited, you have had a prayer or a verse for the people, for the viewers who are watching you today. What verse or blessings do you want to pronounce for them? Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. To him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that you can ever ask or think. This is the verse that I'm living with all of you today. Those of you who have been watching this one, God is able, my God is able to do beyond, he's able, able to do anything that you ask. Not only everything that you ask, but beyond what you have been asking. Not only just beyond what you've been asking, but exceedingly beyond your thinking capacity. So God is able, as long as you believe, if you need anything from him, he will give it to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, viewers. Pastor, if you can have a prayer from you as we close. Father God, once again, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful interview. And it is my hope, it is my expectation that the thousands out there who are watching this one, None of them is to remain the same again. If there's anyone who is sick, Father, it's my prayer that will give them faith that this sickness, this sickness is not of death. It will not end up in death because you are a God of restoration. You are a God who heals. There is no sickness that is beyond your capacity to heal. I thank you because you are a God who has done so much for thousands of people around the world at all times, down all down the history. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, bless those who are watching right now and heal them all in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for following today, and we hope you stay blessed. If you want to engage the pastor, get in contact for prayers, to invite him to come also to where you are to preach the word of God, do not forget to leave a comment or reach out, and then we will be able to put you in contact with pastor in order to receive your blessings, to invite him to come to where you are, and for any other thing that you'd like to reach out to him for. Thank you so much for following. God bless you.
知